Hello and welcome to today's Wild Hearthstone deck tech and gameplay video on Hand Buff Death Knight. Hand Buff Death Knight wants to buff any number of our creatures, both the important ones that like to be big, anything from Hollow Hound, uh, No Muncher, Nerubian Swarm Guard, and even the new, uh, where is it? Dark Thorn Quilter. We want to make these creatures, and really just all of our creatures in general, as big as we can to the point where they all represent really big threats that have to be answered. Now, in our in the category of ways we have to buff said cards, you have anything from like Lorthamar to buff them in your deck, Overlord, Runethak to buff them in all cards in your hand, Harmonic Metal, Dark Fallen Neophyte, there's just various cards, even like Blood Tap. There's a lot of cards in the deck that are, want to buff our creatures, usually in hand, but not always. And beyond that, there are just generally okay cards that are used to sort of uh, keep us alive and sort of get us through the awkward build-up phase of actually buffing up said creatures. Anything from corpse generators and early creatures like Body Bagger and even Soul Breaker is another corpse generator and controlling tool to cards like the Headless Horseman and Soul Stealer amongst others to help control the board and make sure that we can control the pace of the game as well as we can. And that is the basics of the list. We basically want to play, you know, various creatures, make them really, really big, and hit our opponent until their life, t uh, or what's their, their health in Hearthstone, I was going to say life total, becomes zero. And with that out of the way, really that's all there is to this deck. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you like it, subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future, and if you have any sort of questions like, I don't have X, what about Y, for the most part, the buff targets, the big ones, are all pretty budget-friendly. I think that, uh, you know, you can vary on what you use to buff your creatures with. Say, if you don't have access to all the legendaries, they aren't all strictly necessary. But the, but, uh, the, the core of what the deck wants to do is pretty cheap. It's just what cards you want to put in to sort of support it, and like or, or the glue cards, as I call them. The glue cards are where the rarity can be played with if you are working with a budget at home. Anywho, thank you all so much for watching. With that out of the way, we'll go on to game number one. And game number one with our little hand buff death knight. Um, meh. Maybe we'll throw back the puppeteer. In my experience, paladin, or not paladin, sorry, priests are usually pretty slower. And for the most part, we can, we can do okay. Just have to be wary not to run too much of your board into like removal, and you can eventually get there. Now, our opening hand is not the most interesting in the world, it has to be said. Ooh, a body bag is nice. Yeah, we're just gonna, you know, gain corpses and try and buff all of our creatures like we talked about in the deck deck. Uh, depending on what we draw, well, yeah, let's see. It's not bad. Yeah, we'll go ahead and draw. Why not? Our opponent has done a whole lot of nothing. Now, to the I, only reason why I even bring that up is that it's so nothing. I haven't. Ooh, the dragons. Okay. Okay, I don't think I've. Well, that's not true. I've gone against a couple of dragon priests. They're usually Reno, since there's very little like opportunity cost, for lack of a better word in, like, running Reno cards, and there's enough good, uh, dragon cards that, like, yeah, you don't really have to make any sort of compromise, which is nice. Um, what are we doing this turn? I guess we can do an Acolyte. Draw some cards here. Let's do this first. In case we happen to draw something useful, which we don't. Yeah, just trade in. At this point, I think our game plan really is, like, somewhat self-explanatory. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and coin so we don't burn cards. But yeah, our game plan is, you know, relatively self-explanatory. We're just going to make try to make our hand as big as we realistically can hope to make it. And use those big creatures to sort of pressure our opponent's life total. Yes, they will have, you know, any number of countless removal spells... But, you know, we just have to be careful about how we pace out our threats so that we aren't all in at any given time on one thing and one thing alone. 
or that we don't, you know, walk right into like the world's most painful uh, Reno Lone Ranger sweep stuff like that, or even uh, Dragon Fire Potion. I say all these things. Uh, I don't. I'm not going to do this in the next video, but in the near future, uh, I do myself also have a uh, a Reno Dragon Priest list that I will eventually use because it's just too good to not do. <laughs> Um, in the meantime, go ahead and play the Amateur Puppeteer. One thing that we can count on with it... Well, actually, I just realized it isn't Reno, because he's... Or it shouldn't be Reno, because he's played two Dragon and Operatives. So if it's a non-Reno Dragon Priest, we do have... We're pretty set and safe on the amount of time we have available to... Okay, maybe not. Okay, that's odd, but sure. Uh... Yeah, we have the time to, like, go ahead and buff up our board as big as we need it to be. So, like, that's not a big concern. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get rid of this. And then we'll do a blood tap. And then play the miniaturized puppeteer. And yes, he could... I know he could swing freely into it with his Baron and, like, live. But again, we're more so in the game of, like, buffing up our hand. And however we do that is, uh, perfectly fine. Are, are the horsemen just in here for, like, a win con? But, like, I mean, they're dragons. They're, they're usually pretty big and somewhat impactful. Like, I would argue that's a little overkill, but, like, okay, I guess. If that's what works for you, I suppose. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and do a harmonic metal. Thing we want to do. Uh, you know, yeah, we'll just play a Dark Thorn. If nothing else, just a, again, a big scary threat that makes our opponent have to answer it. Now, again, they more than likely do have some way to answer it. But right now, we're just in the mode of making them have to have the thing. Again, they probably do have it, but if not, if they don't, not for nothing. I think we could be threatening lethal, I think. 10, 11, 22, 22, plus another 10 is not exactly lethal, but it's very close. That's fine. That resolves. Um, in that case, I think we can... Yeah, we'll do that. Why not? Do a Hollow Hound. Getting rid of their board. And then just hitting out where else we can. And well, yeah, we didn't get, you know, all that damage going to face. We do still get, you know, the 10 from the Quill Boar. Or Quill... Or Quill Terror, or whatever. It is a Quill Boar. Anywho. We still kind of get the damage. We're applying good pressure. I mean, now we just, you know, again... Be safe and smart, and don't develop our board any larger than this. Okay, their deck is weird. Hooray. What fun. Oh, well. Uh, I suppose we'll play the Headless Horseman. Just get rid of the... Or use the uh, Battle Cry to get rid of the biggest thing when we know what it's going to hit. In the meantime, just go ahead and start bonking here and there. Ah, uh, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll be salty. Why not? Our opponent isn't doing that much. Priest really, like... Oh, boy. Like, it's a, it's a good class, but, like, man. It, like... There is, like, a... A, uh, a very consistent, like feel to ev to the majority of priest decks I run into. And that's, like, fine, I guess. I just, like, think that's, like, kind of unfortunate, for lack of a better term. Although, to be fair, if, you know, if we're gonna, like, give our opponent the benefit of the doubt, you know, not for nothing, it's... <sighs> Wild can be expensive, and I understand wanting to have, uh, like, a deck that you know is going to be good for a long time. And and a deck like this, and a good 
core of a priest deck will like be very good at like holding its value for a long time. Uh, anywho, we'll go ahead and attack into the big thing. I think we'll do the pumpkin first. Um, uh, sure, I guess. Why not? We'll do a puppeteer. I guess a baron. And again, just because now we know, or odds are, they aren't running Reno. The most AOE I expect them to have that would be on theme for their somewhat dragon deck. What is it? Oh, right. It would be uh, the Dragonfire Potion, but they've run enough weird cards that they could get anything. They also have the... that whatever that thing's called. What was it called again? A Vision of Darkness. So now they could have access to practically anything. Okay. That's cute. Do I care, though? I guess is the million dollar question. Yep, they're going to get some cards out of it. Enemy dead. Okay. I mean, they're doing fine. Uh, let's see what we draw. That's pretty good. In that case, we'll pop one here, one you there. Uh, we're very close to being able to do a load of damage, which is lovely. Go ahead and hero power. Let's see what we draw. Um, sure. That seems odd that I should be at... Okay, that's odd. Uh, and I guess we'll just play a, a Corpse Bagger. I don't know why I had it in my head that I couldn't discover cards that weren't in my um, uh, rune identity. Maybe I, like, made that up. But, I mean, we'll take it. It's going to do good. It's going to really help us. Okay, what are we doing here? How many can I spend? Spin up to five corpses, deal to two damage to a random enemy for each. So I'm sitting on ten damage to the face. If I need to, from that card alone. Not to mention the Gnome Munchers, if they don't play anything big or scary. And we're sitting on a full spell stone here, which is very nice. That's fine. Drawing me some cards. I mean, honestly, even if by some miracle he happens to make me mill, I don't think there's anything I care about milling. But boy, oh boy, they sure are playing cards and doing things. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, oh, he's just dead. What am I doing? Don't don't be BM Max. Just get the kill. Uh, what's the big one? And then just, for certainty's sake, literally doesn't matter what I pick. There we go. That's honestly, yeah, a pretty good showing. We just, you know... I know that this particular deck tech uh, was shorter than most. Only because the deck's not that complicated. As you can see, you just buff your dudes, make them really, really big to the point where every creature is a considerable threat and sort of has to be dealt with. And then, like, you know, you just bonk them until they lose. Like, it's not the most complicated deck in the uh, in the world, but, like, I'm not a complicated man. I like, you know, <laughs> to use a magic term, you know, big green dudes for it. I just, you know. <laughs> but anywho, with all that out of the way, we'll go on now to game number two. And game number two with our little hand buff death knight. Um... Go ahead and throw back some of the slower cards in the off chance it's a more aggressive pirate, or uh, like a pirate warrior. Though it could be slower. Uh, I've been seeing some like control warriors that have that Odin dude, whatever his name is, the, like whenever you gain armor, you gain that much attack to the end of the turn for the rest of the game. I've seen that like decks where that's like its main win con. And those decks that gain like a hundred armor or something goofy. Those decks, uh, or a deck like that, would be very difficult for a hand buff deck to, in theory, win. Just because they've gained, while 
a sufficiently large creature that like we would want to summon is a a great threat having you know a a sufficiently large amount of armor is also a good way to like answer that not for nothing and who knows that it could be that it could be anything and although that those are the two most common ones like your piratey aggro-y thing and that control sort of deal that's what I've had the most experience with but hey you know you never know it could be wrong um, I guess we'll go ahead and do a blood tap and again play another ghoul and just generate those corpses to buff up our creatures from our various means next turn because if our opponent isn't going to do that much besides, like, control thing and pass. This is almost certainly what I was talking about, the more slowly controlling one. Because that, um, that, what's that? I think it's like the, like, forge and the, the bellows card thing where, like, it's five damage. And if you forge it, another five that goes random. That's a, a common card in this list. Um, nah, in that case, we'll just play a Baron. Okay, can't really do much else. So yeah, just play another hero power. With any luck, because we have both of our quilters in our hand, we might be able to make the quilters sufficiently large that, like, if we manage to keep our opponent's armor total down, that, like, the end of turn ability of the quilters can just end the game. What was that? That was a snap pick. What was that? Oh, it's the Garrosh's Gift. Okay. Okay, oh yeah, this is guaranteed a control deck. Because only slower decks, in my experience, can afford to run these cards. They're good cards, though. Like, they're not... They're the kind of cards that aren't... Are never going to be fantastic game-winning things, but they're... They're beautiful little, uh... Bits of tech to have floating around, or ways to give you third copies of any of these things. You know, it's... They're perfectly fine cards. They might not be the most exciting, but that's not a bad problem to have. And yeah, our opponent is gaining a, a absolute shitload of armor. Actually, let's do this right. We'll do the Neophyte first, and then we'll play the now buffed Acolyte of Death. Again, just buffing up our board, and then using what little board of that we have to sort of, as much as we can anyway, uh, like keep their armor total down. I, would, I don't want to be running... Oh, sanitize. Okay. Okay, I, I made the wrong call about which one it was. But um, I don't want to run into a big sweeper like that and have my entire board blown out if we can avoid it. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, pretty much no matter what it hits, we're fine with. It hit great. Do a blood tap. Again, more ghoul charges here. How big are these? Sitting on 20 damage, not for nothing. If nothing else, we might just play a Hollow Hound and, like, just try and pressure our opponent into using whatever next removal they have. It's an argument we could play a Swarm Guard and maybe, like, bait out if he has. Sorry? I mean. Fine? I care? That's so odd. Um, I that that derailed me to no end. Um, oh, what if he only has this and um, the Titan dude? That has to be it, right? Or something weird? I don't know. Uh, we will go ahead and play the Swarm Guard then. And with the rest of our mana. Just keep going face and keeping our opponent's health total low. He could trade into one of our taunts and, like, get a freebie in that regard, which wouldn't be great, but it's whatever. Again, we're just trying to make our opponent make choices here. Okay. Okay, now I don't know which deck is. I, I was with you before, but now you've, you've lost me. Got. Guess we can draw. No muncher is fine, I guess. Um, I 
like, uh, yeah, we could do a, a Zom tank or whatever it's called. Again, just keep going face, making our opponent make choices here. And now our Spellstone is at its max rank. So that's very good. Okay, what are we doing, opponent? Because I, I was giving you a lot of credit that I don't think you deserved. This is so weird because they've shown themselves to like run a lot of armor gain cards, which is totally fine. But by doing that, it's going to really limit where you can get the Ice Lord like to a low enough, like to get the lower cost thing triggered. Because you're always going to be at sufficiently high life totals. Okay. I mean, that that's a play that resolves. Give him three, and then it goes to four, and then it goes to five, and you still can't do it. So you might as well hit with the 8-8. Eight, eight, or don't. Uh, oh! I mean... Cool? Okay, that's fine. In that case, we'll go ahead and do a Puppeteer and the miniature version of it. And again, just make our minions as big as we can. I actually want to buff now to make the small one as big as we can. Also playing the Accolade of Death. And again, just a big scary board. That now we'll also get some card draw off of, which is nice. Ooh, do I feel a sneeze coming off? No? Okay. Anywho. Okay, my I don't know what my opponent's doing. I mean, I guess they're just... Let me rephrase that. I think they are doing some sort of, like, control warrior thing. I was just, like, mind gaming it too far. And they're just, you know, running control tools and, like, some big scary things at the top end that they have to, like, deal with it. Which is fine. Ah. Uh, what are we doing here? Uh, I won't even, like, get rid of the one I want to get rid of, which is unfortunate. Um, in that case, we can do a Hollow Hound. And then we'll attack one of the hands, therefore getting free hits on the others. And I think we're going to use one of the Quilters now. And now we're going to really put our opponent in a position where they have to uh, have whatever hands and yeah, they gained, what, two health off of the, the Bulwark, and that's fine. But yeah, if they do not answer this with, like, a Brawl or something, or some answer, even, like, an Execute or something, they will just die. What did they play? Oh, from your hand. Okay, someone's clearly had that quest today. Do I care? 6, 12, 12, 20. So, okay, you, you kill the Quilter. What do you summon? That's a good one. Has to be said. Okay, now their deck's getting a little away from me here. I, uh... Can you so you? Then I th think we just do... A quilter and like a big gnome muncher. Yeah, and just, you know, hope we do a, some okay damage, I guess. 17 are hitting, like, oh my god, that was, <laughs> that was awful. Oh my god, that was like an aggressively bad way for that to go, but sure, whatever. Are you now gonna sweep with whatever brawl you have? Okay, I don't know. Okay, yeah, they're just big stuff dot deck, which is fine. I mean, not for nothing. It's like clearly gonna get them like somewhere. Yep, 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 yep. Um. Oh, I uh, I think we we just say fuck it and go. Oh yeah, because once I play the muncher, he'll be the lowest health total. Problem solved. There we go. That way, even if by some miracle the 17 weren't going to get it, 
the Gnome Muncher would have gotten it. So that's a good spot. And again, another really good showing for the deck. And there's not that much to say. Again, we just played a load of big stuff, and our, our big stuff happened to be just a little scarier than their big stuff. But that really is more so just by the the sheer weight of the stats that I was bringing to bear against my opponent. But anywho, I suppose now we'll go on to game number three. And game number three with our little hand buff death knight. Um, this is honestly a, a oh, well, we'll get rid of one of the puppeteers, but this is a pretty good hand. Uh, having access to a no muncher early on means that Hopefully, anyway. Okay, I was going to say when our opponent does aggressive things, but that, that throws a, a wrench in that. But basically, if it is a more aggressive deck somehow, the No Muncher gives us like a big, beefy way to gain a whole lot of life. Is more or less the hope here. Uh, next turn, yeah, we're just going to play a Ghoul Charge all day long. Yeah, just Hero Power. Get some corpses. Next turn, it should be back on uh, giving four minions plus two plus two. So we'll be able to buff all, most of, if not all, of our hand, depending on what we draw. Okay, if you're a death rattle list, the Malkazar is so weird in here, but sure. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do the metal. If it one happens to leave us a land on the neophyte, we're fine with that. And really, the big ones, you know, we're getting buffs. Which is really what we wanted to do anyway. I do love me some Death Rattly Hunter stuff. It is like a really fun way to play that class. Okay. That was in his deck too. Okay. I don't know if that's good, but I'm in it. In that case, we'll go ahead and bonk into the Arfis. Yeah thinking about coining and doing like a neophyte there or something like that, but I don't think we need to explicitly right now. Next turn, we can just play an amateur puppeteer and just sit on it and wait. Okay, they're Death Knight, but they're like all in. Or Death Rattle, sorry. They're like all in on the, the Death Rattle part of it. Uh, yeah, we'll do this one first. Why not? Um, I think we will... Well, We'll go ahead and pass. There are ways, in theory, that he can make my opponent can make me uh, mill cards next turn, but it, it does seem very unlikely to be run. Granted, I could be wrong. Who knows? But we're doing pretty good, and we're going to be developing like a pretty big and scary board. Okay, spider bomb. Play dead. All right, all right. Opponent is doing very good. He's doing all the right things. Not for nothing. I think we can do... Uh, we'll do, like, a Neophyte. And then we'll do a big Puppeteer here. And then we'll use our Ghoul Charge to get rid of the Arthas. Granted, they could get, like, some... It says Death Knight card, right? Or Lich King card. Which is an important distinction, I believe, because they're different cards. Yeah, because you can get things like Army of the First. Episode. Yep, yep, yep. That's very good, however. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. I applaud their commitment to the bit. I really do. Making all the right plays. Doing everything correct. Hell yeah. In that case, do another Puppeteer. I guess do that puppeteer also. Uh, yeah, sure. Hopefully we should be able to live for a turn here. To where if I need to panic and use a soul stealer next turn. Like now. This coin has sort of become dead in my hand a smidge, which isn't great. Oh, he has both, doesn't he? Oh yeah, we're... If we weren't going to do it before, we're sure as hell going to do it now. <laughs> oh yeah, we're. If there was any doubt before, we're sure as hell doing it now. 
Um, in that case, I think we'll do a Soul Stealer. We might be able to coin and use our Spellstone, which should be online then. There we go. Now, we could very well die, but if we live and turn the corner next turn, we're going to be in a great spot. They could have some weird burn. It's possible. I mean, I'd be surprised if they do, but like, you know. Yeah, there's another Stalag. We're doing things. We are doing things. Oh boy, my god. The credit given. That deck is fantastic. Um, in that case, I think we're going to just hit here. Probably do... Uh, let's see pretty big gnome muncher and maybe a zombie tank just to uh, get the biggest board possible. A 20 point life total swing is like really big. He's going to get a whole bunch of Thaddeus but I don't think we care. Okay, this is it. Hunter is not a, a class known to have um, a whole lot of board sweeps available. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe they're, uh, that, like, poison serpent bloom thing, and, uh, uh, the, okay, that's not it. The dread mob, well, that's the card. Okay. I think we got it. For our opponents here, anyway. They're, they're, they're doing things. Then what a Thaddeus into like one of the tanks, I guess. Right, I think we're okay. And the next turn we can play both the Muncher and the Quilter and almost certainly get it. If this doesn't, which it should. That's fine. Yeah, I think that's a game. Hit face. We do Quilter, and then we do Muncher. And that's that's it. Hell yeah. And that was Hand Buff Death Knight. It's a pretty simple list and a whole lot of fun. And I'd actually really recommend that you try some version of it at home. I think you'll get like a lot of good results with it. There's not a whole lot else to say. I could totally see myself revisiting this list in the future. You know, we just need either interesting hand buff targets or more cool hand buff spells. Which we might get. Whoever knows. Anywho, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and like to see more. And if you have any sort of questions or constructive comments, leave them down below and I'll do what I can to respond to what I see. Thank you all. Be so kind to one another. And stay cool out there because it's getting pretty hot. Bye-bye.